Hey folks, so y'all probably remember this board. Uh, I installed one of these in a Game Boy Advance. This one right here, uh, this is the uh, battery meter board. Uh, I went ahead and soldered up another one. Y'all asked, I said I'd do it, and then I completely forgot and didn't do it. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and put this in a Game Boy Advance SP. Uh, now this is the board that I did make custom. Um, Alex's original board worked perfectly fine, except that I ordered the wrong AT Tinies, and rather than order new AT Tinies, I figured it would be cheaper to just make new boards, and so I did. This is functionally identical to Alex's board. It even uses the exact same firmware. Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, if you want to go ahead and solder one yourself, assemble it, it's actually, it's really not too bad. Uh, the soldering it's a little small, but you know, stuff spread out enough. Um, but for those curious, here's a quarter for scale. It's, you know, like I said, it's pretty easy to solder. Not too bad. Um, not too small. But uh, anyway, he does currently sell a version of this on his store. He does not sell the Game Boy Advance one. Uh, he sells one made for putting in a uh, original Game Boy. The only difference is the actual form factor and that he has resistors on all of the LEDs to make it less bright. This is pretty cool, but I found out pretty quickly when you're sitting there, you know, in the dark trying to play, these lights right in your face are super blinding. It's okay, but it's less than optimal, so resistors on there would be pretty decent. And, uh... Again, this second board for the LEDs, this is just so that you can put the LEDs away from this board. You don't have to put them, uh, so you don't have to solder LEDs to this board. You know, you can put, you can hide this wherever the heck you want and then put this where the LEDs go and then just connect it up. But for the SP version, I'm thinking I don't really want to run 11 wires. That sounds a little bit more complicated than I'm willing to deal with. So we're going to... Uh, well, I'm going to try soldering the LEDs straight to this thing and see what the hell happens. Uh, so let me get my flux. Oh god, I have a stack of games and it's threatening to fall over. Okay. And there it goes. That's what I get. That's what I get for not cleaning up my desk. Sorry, got a whole stack of projects. Right, so LEDs, what color should I use? I have There we go. I haven't decided this ahead of time because that would be wise. Uh, I have yellow, I have blue, I have green, I have white, and I have red. Um, you know, I don't think I want to use these. I'm not, I'm not really feeling any of these colors here. Uh, I don't want to use the same white ones. That's lame. Let's use these pink ones that I have left over from another project here. Alright, so we need... 10 LEDs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And you'll have to forgive me for half assembling this ahead of time. Um, this, the whole process for assembling and then flashing the firmware on this part is literally the exact same as it was last time. Nothing has changed. Uh, I'm even using the exact same firmware that I posted because uh, I was... Um, negligent and never actually ordered the correct resistors so i made some i tweaked the firmware a little bit because i'd never had a 320k ohm resistor i only had 300k now as it turns out i also have 330k which would have worked better i think but that ship has sailed i figured it's easier to use the same wrong resistor that way i can use the same wrong firmware anywho so I'm going to go ahead and solder these on there as a reminder, because apparently I have to figure this out every single time. Uh, these LEDs, the polarity is marked by a little T on the back. The T points towards the, uh, the negative. 
So we can test that. Take my multimeter here. Looks like it's done charging. Pop this over to diode test mode. And if we put the negative meter on the arrow and the positive, you can see it tries to light up. There we go. Ta-da! And as you remember from last time, possibly, these are all common ground. So we just solder them straight to these pads and then run a single wire connecting them all together. And that'll probably work. Hopefully. I never bothered pre-tinning these, though. And uh, upon reviewing my Game Boy Advance video, I realized that I never actually did quite a few things that I said I was going to do. So I apologize for that. I said I was going to upload that other board, this little one here. Uh, the one that I modified made it slightly taller so that you can get it through Osh Park. I never did that. I'm sorry. I will do that soon. Uh, obviously, I can't do that right this second, but I'll do that soon. Okay, it only works if you turn around one, not both. Sorry, I learned a trick. If I fold this light up, I can get this camera in nice and tight. I gotta turn the light off though, because then it blinds me when I try and solder. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That thing was gonna go flying when those untwisted. Okay. I prefer the curved ones, but I don't have them. They're somewhere, not here. Let's just get this, start soldering this down. Suppose these ones are pretty nice for that though, it's easier to flip over components. Every single one is facing the wrong way. Oh, this is going to look awful. Because these are all going to be a slightly different angle. Because every time I solder one of these down, I accidentally tilt it down a little bit. Instead of soldering it flush. Hey, I don't think that one's backwards. I right, clean this iron.
Might help if I diffuse these quite a bit though. Which I have some ideas on, but don't know yet. So yeah, those are wonderfully misaligned, but that's okay. It's got that uh, hand assembled charm or something. Emphasis on the or something. And I was thinking we'd just run a wire under it and then wrap it up and tack it down to tack it down to ground. That should be fine, right? Awful, I have to fix it, but I'll fix it in a second. So, this I'm gonna wrap up and around to that. I just want to make sure I have enough wire because oh, I should have stripped this before I cut it, that would have made way more sense. I gotta strip more wire than uh, is gonna be left. Oh, and I don't have pliers handy. Because that would be convenient. Okay. We'll make it work. Don't worry. Told you. I'm just trying to straighten these out now. Oof. That was the opposite of what I wanted to do.
damn it. Okay. Whew. That was rough. All right, so I took a quick spontaneous break, and uh, while the soldering iron's heating up, I just want to show you a quick little trick. Uh, so if you put your multimeter on diode test mode, which normally looks like just has a diode symbol, this multimeter doesn't have a continuity mode, so I always use diode test mode for continuity instead. When you touch the meters, it should show zero resistance. So when you touch something that is shorted together, it's going to show zero resistance. But anyway, if you put it in diode test mode and touch the black probe against the ground and the red probe against the positive, it will actually light up an LED, which is a good quick way to test your LEDs. Make sure you didn't um, accidentally melt them, getting a little too overzealous with the soldering iron or something. And I did already go through all of these real quick. And they're all still fine despite my inability to get this one testing. There it goes. user error as it were. Anyway, I think the soldering iron is pretty, pretty well heated up by new. When I was originally designing this PCB, I had never actually considered just soldering the LEDs straight to it. So it's a, um, Helpful coincidence that it all worked out so nicely. Okay. So this is going to be the hard part. How do I solder this and film it? Oh, wow. <laughs> I did not expect that to work as nicely as it did. I forgot the last two. I actually bend it so it's touching. Let me try that again. I think that's... I think that's all of them. Wow, that was nice. All right, set the iron down. And I'm going to use as a ground the bottom of this capacitor here. I want to try and leave this uh, ICSP in circuit serial programming port alone in case I ever want to update the firmware on this thing. Uh, maybe add new light animations or something. Or maybe I get the uh, tweaks wrong for the resistor or something. I don't know. Whatever it may be, I don't want to lock myself out of easily updating the firmware. Right, so this thing is assembled. Bring that back down. And let's just do a quick double t check, make sure all these are soldered. So I should be able to just touch that. 
and that. Those two are shorted, that's not good. The rest of them are good, except that these two are shorted. I don't know why these two are now shorted. Hmm. I'm going to go clean this with some isopropyl alcohol and do a little bit of diagnosing, see if I can't figure out why those are shorted. Um, and I will be back in just a moment. All right, so I got the uh, error figured out with the short here. If I pop this on here, you can see now I only get one LED instead of both of them. Or maybe you can't really see that because of where the camera is and where it's focused, but You'll have to take my word for it if you can't see it. It's all working now, as expected. Um, one thing I did realize while I was testing this out... Uh, oh, real quick. The problem was that there was just short on... Focus. Short on two of these pins up here. But I resoldered that, cleared that short, we're all good to go. Uh, one thing I did realize while I was off camera was that you guys let me forget to install the resistors here. So on this board, the LEDs go on top, and then you put resistors on the bottom. That's why there's two sets of pads. I just completely forgot to do that this time, because uh, I wasn't using that board. No matter, it should be an easy fix. And uh, the process is going to be the exact same thing, but more. Okay. So unfortunately, I have to solder this excellent wire that I worked so hard on. But that's okay. Is this thing on? What the fuck? Yeah, it is. There we go. All right. Can't even tell. That out of the way. Okay, there we go. So again, same deal, except this is going to be much more annoying. Because I'm soldering surface mount components to surface mount components. Let me get one of these done. And then I'll flip the camera over. I realized my mistake when I went to plug this thing in and uh, test it with how ridiculously bright these LEDs were. I didn't blow anything up, but Goodness, did it scare me. All right, I need to do this differently. A better option would be not using surface mount components on surface mount components, but that ship has sailed. On the bright side, this should be quite a bit easier to solder and see. All right. Do we even need to tin these? Probably. 
cool. That's even easier. This resistor is going to be backwards. It's going to ruin the whole thing. The aesthetic is going to be off. Ooh. See if you can't touch this one up from the bottom. Is that going to work? Not at all. Mostly because I can't even see the port. All right, I'm gonna have to fix that one later. I can't get to it from the angle it's at. Ooh, that one's nasty. I'm gonna have to touch up the solder on that one too. Oof. You know it's bad when the whole LED tips over. Okay. So we got two we need to touch up the solder on. Why is this not sticking? I might have killed this LED. Let's get a new one. Screw it. <sighs> Rather than fuss with it later and try and figure out why it's not working, I'll replace both those questionable ones. This is why I like my curved tweezers. They don't like twist around. Okay. Okay. Let's get it going. Let's get it on.
That's better. What was the other sketchy one? Never mind, they all seem fine apparently. This one's crooked though. Ah, it was this one. Okay. Nice. Let's get the resistors back on those two. I don't know where that went. That's why you buy extra resistors. <laughs> that was spectacular. Try that again. And where'd that last one go? What the hell? Did I just do the same thing? Oh, there it is. Oh my god. Did that really just happen? Wow. Cool. Twice in a row. That's okay. I bought a hundred pack. By the end of this video, I might just go through that. Oh wait, hey, I just found it. think, oh, you doing that the first time, I almost screwed you over. Let's do it again, several times. Nice. Now, if we flip this over, we should be back exactly where we started, except this time. with resistors. This is probably going to be a lot easier if I tin this first one. And solder the wire 
the old fashioned way. Uh, the solder joint broke. Let's just add more solder. This is the worst that could possibly happen. There we go. I did not expect that to work at all. not going very smoothly. Went way better the first time. They're all soldered though. I wish this one hadn't fallen over though. I think that whole thing was out of focus. I apologize. Oh, no. I should just stop trying to clean this up and just fix it and leave it alone. Okay, screw it. It's staying. It looks way worse than it did, but that's okay. So this is what I use to flash these things. It's a USB ASP. This thing, just cheap on credit. Oh no, the cable doesn't reach. Camera. That wasn't supposed to break. Oh, the USB port is just a hair out of reach. Tilt it up. You see some of my messy disk. Ah, oh, it's still just barely out of reach. There we go. Hey, they all came on. That's good. All right. back and let's just do one more quick test 
make sure there's no shorts. So ground on here. We are all good. Whew. Okay, cool. So I'm going to take a quick break again. Um, clean up a little bit. Not mess with this because there's no way I can fix this without ruining it. And uh, actually, I'm probably going to douse this whole thing in hot glue. But yeah, I'm going to let the camera cool down and I'll be back in just a bit. Toodles. All right, so here we go. Uh, I ended up hot gluing it. That was almost definitely a mistake. Uh, it's probably within my best interest to just desolder this whole hot mess and delete this video and pretend it never happened, but fuck it. Here we go. So, we've got the uh, ever-modded Game Boy Advance SP, and uh, let's see if we can't cram one more mod into it. As you can see, it's still working perfectly fine. Uh, so let's see if we can't change that. Anyway... I'm going to need to take off the top and the bottom. Hopefully I don't need to take the PCB out. By the way, I found out something really neat with my battery mod. If you have one of these, uh, these cheap Chinese junk cells, take the wrapping off, remove the cell. You can use the frame and the PCB from it for one of these ones, but I'm getting distracted, sorry. Let's use a plastic tool for that. And instead of grabbing like a civilized adult, I'm just going to throw it on the floor. So yeah, hopefully I don't have to take the uh, main PCB out because there is wiring mess from this headphone mod. And I really don't want to have to undo that. I have a feeling I'm going to though. And if that's what it comes to, bear with me. I'll try and edit out the sobs. relatively painless so far and I can get at everything I need to except that I can't run wires. Uh, I had planned on putting this in the top. The, uh, because I used a Game Boy Advance screen lens, it if I go too long without taking this thing apart, no, it uh, tends to stick. It comes apart, just got to take it slow. So there might be a way I can uh, convince a wire to go where I want it to go without having to take this thing apart. But the problem is I'll need to do that at least twice. To be honest, the pins I need to access are actually probably on this ribbon here, but I just can't see that ending well if I use this. So, let's get 
some wire that I thought I had handy. What the heck? If I just feed this, it'll follow the other way. No, that's not what's happening. Okay. Well. Darn. Okay, so the goal, or the idea, the plan, is to put this thing right here. And, uh... I think we might have to mod the screen for the this part to get that to fit. Yeah, we will. So in hindsight, it's just going up along the top instead. Because that is going to be so much easier. Nope, just kidding. Because that'll need to be cut out too. Hmm. I'm thinking, let's put it right there then. Of course, you can put this anywhere you can get it to fit. It really does not matter. Um, actually, I could probably just put it right in the middle. Yeah, that fits perfectly fine there. As you can see. But, uh, oh, damn it. I don't want to do that because I want it to try and bleed over the edges. What with the clear shell and all. Which is what I was hoping to get it to... Oh, well, that'll work. I could do it that way. Sorry, I'm kind of planning as I'm going. I should have done this ahead of time. Screw it. Let's, let's just see what happens. It's not going to be the prettiest, but I think that was obvious way long ago when I started, first started cutting on this thing. that look? Pretty freaking sweet? I think so. Oh no, I didn't even think about this. I hope that's not upside down. Oh well. Let's just run three wires. It's probably going to be easiest. See, the ground I could tap into just solder right there. <sighs> you know what? Screw it. Yeah. It's going to make my life so much easier. If you don't have a uh, IPS modded Game Boy Advance SP, then you're going to have to find your ground elsewhere. But since I do have one, I'm getting my ground right here.
we open this up. Oh no! Test it out in continuity mode. We can see that that is indeed a ground. To be honest, I'd rather have the uh, MCU facing out than uh, have it be usable. I'd rather have it look cool than have it be functional. I mean, at this point, why not? Probably a bad idea to just attach this thing to this ribbon right off the bat, but what's the worst that could possibly happen? I don't see how any of this could possibly go wrong. So battery minus is just a ground. And this is so much better than having to run three wires. This way I only have to run two wires. I could probably also tap into... Oh, it's slightly too long. Oh well. The um, voltage, the power line. And then I'd only have to run one wire to the battery. But this will be good enough. Oh, what I should double check is that that actually connects up to the battery. I don't think it makes a huge difference if it doesn't, as long as it's still connected to a system ground. Because that's the same on other systems, but I don't know if it's the same on an SP. But let's double check, yeah? Out of curiosity, is that a ground too? Yeah. So does that connect to that? Yes, it does. Cool. Easy peasy. That'll work just fine. Now I need to do the annoying part and run a couple wires. Actually, out of curiosity, I seriously doubt it's that easy. No. If it were, that would be super sweet. You could almost definitely use one of these pads like this one. But oh, that's also a ground. That's not too big of a deal. Okay. For reference, this is a V1 funny playing IPS kit for Game Boy Advance. So your your mileage may vary. Okay. So that's gonna need to go there. There. Oh, 
all the way, all the way there. Cut a little bit extra. This one, same deal there, 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 up, and only right there. A little bit extra. And I am going to have to put down some... Oh wait, no, I'll just put this on top of the foam. Never mind. That should be fine. Famous last words. Here's the part where I burst into tears. It's going to be more inconvenient than I thought, too, because I have to remove the hinge cover. Looking at how much time I have left on this video, quite frankly, it's probably going to end before I get these wires routed. Because as you can see, this thing's a mess in here. There's no possible way I can remove this motherboard either. Not if I expect to retain functionality of all my mods. These will go through nice. That's one. That is two. All right, we might be in good shape. I could have made this way easier on myself by not modding this SP, but ain't no fun in that. Oh, and of course the buttons fill out. All right, that's in place. All the freaking buttons fill out. Even the speaker fell out, come on. Give me a break. Anyway, I got it. Thankfully, all the wires are still mostly in place. All the buttons are in place. Uh, it was a little touch and go there for a bit, but I got it reinstalled. 
<laughs> okay, I also ended up putting a little bit of capped on tape on the bottom of this just in case. Uh, I think it should be good without, but I'd rather play it safe. And I'm going to put the foam on the bottom. And this should hopefully fit. Oh, it's not straight. I ended up trimming that and then I didn't even need to. It's not in the right position, that's why. Better. Not quite what I was going for, but let's try it out. Or I guess let's get these screws in so I can finish assembling and then we can try it out. I'm having screw difficulties trying to assemble this one handed. Right. <laughs> the uh, hinge is getting a little bit um, problematic with all these wires running through. In fact, I think it's pinching right there. I need to move those. <sighs> Don't worry, we'll get there eventually. You just stick with me. Sit down, shut up. Grin and bear it. Bite the pillow, whatever you need to do. Yeah, it was pinching. The two new wires don't know where they need to be. That should be better. There we go. All right. So last but not least, let's boot up the soldering iron. And this long one needs to go over this way to right there. that a little bit better so that this actually goes back together. Okay, I think we should be fine. Like on the Game Boy Advance, that should go on one of the middle two terminals. Doesn't matter which because they are shorted together. Uh, I'm going to go for the further one just because I have a little bit extra wire and you know what I'm actually not going to trim that I'm just going to leave the slack because 
Probably gonna have to take this thing apart again for some god awful reason. And I'm sure having a little bit of slack will be helpful. So in this case, I'm gonna use C1. Just add some more solder. Route that around the crystal just like that. And this last one needs to connect to the positive battery terminal, which I have already completely forgotten which one that is. I'm going to route it from the bottom here. And I'm pretty sure there's an easy way to check this. Batteries are labeled, so it's the bottom one. And unfortunately, some moron put a wire in the way, but that's okay. This one I should probably trim. But I won't. Right, it's all wired up. Probably sitting there thinking to yourself, gee, that wasn't so bad. Well, shut up. <laughs> it is significantly easier on an SP that doesn't already have a handful of mods. And because everything went so smoothly, gonna slide together no issues I'm not even gonna have to reroute the wires Nothing. So this way, if I need to update the firmware, I should just have to uh, pop this top off and uh, connect up my USB ASP to this thing just like that. And it should be good to go. I was hoping to get the LEDs underneath that little diffused portion, but oh well. It just wasn't meant to be, I guess. Uh, so... Let's try it out, yeah? Hopefully I didn't break anything. So I'm going to try it out with this battery, which I think is fully charged. Hopefully. As you can see, there's nothing on. But if we turn that on... Yeah, buddy! And I'm holding the battery in because there's no battery cover, but, uh, oh no, I have no A button, the tragedy. Oh, there we go, I just had to press hard apparently, good lord, I hate it, I hate it, but it boots. 
Shut it off. That goes off. Now let's try this. This is a mostly charged battery, but a super low capacity one. It does show fully charged. But let's see if we can't. Let's try booting the game, huh? Oh, it does work. It's just you gotta press really hard. It's ridiculous. Let's try. Screw it. We'll boot that. That'll be fun. Yeah. Just while loading, I lost one bar. Oh, and it came back. And it's gone again. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to go anywhere. Nowhere decent, anyway. Let's... Uh, I mean, I could, I could sit here for another half an hour, and you'd probably see that move with this battery, but... I was expecting the voltage to drop a little bit more. So let's try this thing here. So at absolute rock bottom, 3.08 volts. Doesn't even boot. That's cool. Three point three volts. You know, let's kill these lights, huh? So the Game Boy Advance SP didn't boot, but because the power is on, the uh, battery meter is on. So let's try it again. Yeah, the SP won't boot on voltage that low, so we'll probably need to adjust the firmware for this to lower the cutoff. Because as you can see, at 3.38 volts, it's too low for the SP, but it's still showing like half, just under half. 3.48 volts. It does boot. So yeah, we'll have to uh, I'll have to tweak the firmware, recompile, and then update it again. But I'm just gonna drop this down. You can still play with it. So on the Game Boy Advance, I had it tweaked so that it shut off at exactly three volts because that was about when the Game Boy Advance shut off. This one I'm gonna have to tweak a little bit. Because uh, the cutoff seems to be about 3.45. Let's see. Works on 3.45. Oh, that's the wrong way. Yeah, the cutoff is at 3.4. Which is four bars. The... Uh, top end should max out at about 4.2 volts. Nope. I'm gonna have to tweak that too. Cool. So I'm gonna do this off camera because I'm getting tired and it's bedtime. But so far so good. Just have to tweak the um, firmware values, and we'll be good to go. The uh, the problem is, and I didn't anticipate this. I'm kind of disappointed. The uh, SP uses a different cutoff than the regular Game Boy Advance because obviously they're designed for different batteries. Um, but I also had to customize the firmware on this thing because I was using the wrong resistor value. Now, if we look at this fully charged battery, we should see exactly what voltage it's at. It's probably around 4 volts, even though max is out at 4.2. Yeah, 4.11. So, I probably want to set the max to about 4 volts, not 4.2. 
just so that you know the second you start up off of a fresh charge it's not nearly you know it's not showing that it's 20 percent dead or whatever but yeah that's that's wicked cool with the lights off you can see that refracting much better yeah i'm happy with that Nice. Oh, so I guess I can leave the max where it is. I'll just have to set the lower voltage. Oops. Oh, shoot. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> well, I guess my Easy Flash is updated now. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and tweak this, see if I can't get my A button working better, um, update the firmware, and I'll. I'm just going to end the video here. I'll post an update in the description if I get everything working properly. Um, but otherwise, thanks for sticking with me, guys. I know this was a super long one, and it was kind of frustrating. Uh, I could have planned better, but it is what it is. Right, so it's been a little bit of time here. I've tweaked this thing. I think I've got it to a point where I'm really happy with it. Uh, I've got a fully charged battery in it right now. So if we turn it on, we get... Uh, full illumination there. Uh, I also trimmed the foam underneath so you can see it a little bit better on the flip side here. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not going to go down because this is a fresh battery, pretty strong battery, but there it is. I'm happy with it. Let's, uh, let's walk through a couple things real quick though. Uh, I did end up customizing the firmware again, like I did for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, two different reasons for that. First, oops. Uh, first is that uh, <clears throat> the Game Boy Advance SP uses a slightly different voltage cutoff level than the original Game Boy Advance, uh, mostly because they're designed for two completely different style batteries. Uh, but also, I had to customize the firmware because I'm using uh, the wrong resistor again. So I used a three three. 100,000 resistor, 300,000 ohm resistor instead of a 320 ohm, I think. I don't know. The bill of materials is in the parts list uh, in the description below. But um, let, me, let me walk you through what happens using a uh, power supply here. So I'll hold this at an angle so we can see both the power light and the meter here. And if we turn on my other power supply here, see it's set to about 4.17 volts, which is just about a fully charged battery. A fully charged battery should be at 4.2 volts, uh, but unless you're using a brand new cell, chances are pretty good it has a little, it has some decent self discharge and by the time you actually start playing, after charging it, it's going to be at around 4.1 volts or something. Uh, but anyway, plug this in here. And if we turn it on, we can see I have a fully illuminated battery bar because it is a, uh, this is simulating a fully charged battery. So if we bring this down a little, we're at 3.93 volts you can see I lost three bars there bring it back up to 4.07 I only have one light out 4.01 two lights out 3.88 uh, we're at five out of or six out of ten if I bring it down just a hair I should be at seven or five excuse me and indeed I am, 3.83. So at about 3.73-ish, 3.75, that's when the low power light is going to kick on, and that's when we should be at about half. Well, we already are at about half, so shouldn't adjust too much. See the low power light came on? We're now down to 4 out of 6, or 4 out of 10. 3.693 left. 3.582 left, and the low voltage cutoff on a Game Boy Advance SP is 3.4 volts. So I'll bring this down as slowly as I can. 3.5 volts, you have one bar left. And then 3.44, 4, 
all the lights are out, but the Game Boy Advance is still on. Uh, this is by design here. I figure if you're playing Game Boy, you got your red light on and all of the lights are gone. You know you're, uh, you know it's time to call Kenny Loggins because you're in the danger zone here. Uh, but if we bring this down 0 0.04 volts, 0 0.03 volts, uh, the Game Boy Advance should cut out. And it did. I brought it down and then accidentally brought it back up. But you can see the Game Boy Advance shut off. And because I accidentally brought it back up, I got a light back. But yeah, the cutoff is just about 3.4 volts. And um, plus or minus depending on the accuracy of my tool here. See, as you can see, it won't boot on this. This is too low. There's enough power. I mean, obviously we know that because this isn't a battery, this is a power supply. But that's how the system's designed, so that's how it's gonna work. If we bring it just a hair above, that's why I need a more fine adjustment. Oh, interesting. On my other meter, the uh, the cutout seemed to be at 3.40. Maybe. Oh, I kicked it too high. Well, I think you get the point. There we go. 3.44 on this one. But yeah, I think you get the point. So at barely any power left, all the lights should be out. And I can't even begin to speculate on how much time that's actually going to net you as far as battery life goes. You know, does that mean five minutes? Does that mean half an hour? Who knows? Um, it could be even less than five minutes. The problem is it depends so heavily on not only the capacity of your battery, but the health of the battery and how many mods you have in your system, how clean the power switch is, stuff like that. I can't, I couldn't even speculate. I have no idea. Um, but so far, I'm really happy with the performance of this thing. Uh, it's come out way better than expected, and I'm kind of liking it better than the uh, Game Boy Advance version I did, mostly because I put it on the back. So when you're playing, yeah, it's there, and it's bright, and it's pretty cool. Um, it's rice, I guess you could call it. Uh, but unlike the Game Boy Advance version... You know, it's not, it's not going to sit there blinding you. <laughs> you can see how bright that thing is. You focus on that as the brain is good now. Of course not. But, uh, again, exact same hardware, just different firmware between the two. The hookup is the exact same. Um, everything. Uh, the only difference is I didn't use the second board, I just soldered them straight to the first board so I could avoid running a bunch of wires back and forth, but it worked out in the end. So, yeah, I guess I'll go ahead and post links to all this stuff, and, um, I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on this. I think it's super cool. I mean, obviously it's, you know, it's, it's just a battery meter, so it's not gonna do anything for your uh, play there. And of course, this is still fully charged. That's why I got all the bars. But anyway, um, yeah. Any suggestions, let me know. Any questions, let me know. Any, uh, any uh, other ideas on what to mod into this SP? It's, it's getting pretty ridiculous as far as how many mods I've got packed into this thing, but that's besides the point. Anyway. Uh, I'm rambling now, so let me go ahead and stop here. Um, oh, one more thing. No, I got to do one more thing. Hang on. Sorry. I promise there's a point to this. So I did actually end up modifying the battery compartment a little. Let me turn on some more lights so it's not as glary. Screw it. We'll get all of them. Um... So in the battery compartment here, oh, it's not focusing, that's why. I ended up having to trim out the little support right here on the bottom, and then the supports right here on the bottom as well, just to run all the wires. And now, as you can hopefully hear, my A button works perfectly fine. Uh, the problem was it was just pushing down too hard. And 
I don't know, something was getting caught. But after trimming right in here on the bottom, of course, and then this one right here, all my issues went away. And you can run the wires under the shoulder button just fine. That doesn't, doesn't affect it either. There's plenty of space. One word of uh, recommendation, though, these wires that are on top, you can sort of see them. No. These ones right here, you should run those in the ribbon, through the ribbon, not on top of it. Uh, I did notice that this is kind of squishing the ribbon down, but there's no chance in hell that I'm rerunning those wires. So it is what it is. Hopefully it doesn't break. If it does, because of how I did this mod, it's just a $3 ribbon replacement. So that's not that big of a deal in this SP. But in a normal SP, that would be a big deal. Um, but otherwise, there we go. I think we're done for the evening. So again, thanks for watching. Keep being awesome and have an excellent evening.